There are several projects I've done on this channel that I knew I wanted to go back and revisit. Well, today I'm going to tackle one of those, and that's the warm window curtains I made before we left for our trip to Alaska. you do something for the first time you know there are there's room for improvement and I have spent many months kind of noodling about how I wanted to improve both of these um, I'm gonna start with the warm windows and I'm also going to give you an update on the product itself first I want to say I love that so many of you have tackled the warm window curtains some of you have never sewn ever and especially you guys out there, and uh, Tim, you know who I'm talking about, who have done them and have sent me pictures. I just think it's wonderful and it makes me really happy. Um, as far as the fabric is concerned, it is no longer available at Joann's Fabrics unless you can find a store that still has some on stock. And the reason that's a bummer is because at Joann's, you could usually get a 50% off coupon and save a ton of money because this stuff is not cheap. It's about $35 a yard, but perhaps you can find it um, you know, cheaper somewhere. Uh, or, or call Joann's and ask them to please start carrying it again. Uh, I will put a link below to the fabric itself, and it's really a wonderful fabric. Let me show you a sample of it. So this is the fabric. It has a, um, a kind of a fleece, a fleecy bit. It's very, hope that focus is okay. And then it's got this metallic piece. Come on, focus. Focus, focus. <laughs> it doesn't want to focus. It likes faces, not fabric. Well, let's see, I'll hold it closer to myself. And then it has, um, Another, another layer of fleece, so it's got like two layers of fleece, and then it's got the, uh, uh, some fabric on the outside. So it's, it's four layers of fabric that you're getting. And what we've discovered is that this fabric does an excellent job of, of keeping out the heat and the cold. So I highly recommend this fabric um, over anything else that you can find. The fabric was also great at keeping out the light so when we were in Alaska, or if you're anywhere, you know, high north in the Arctic Circle, you're going to have uh, forever daylight. And so you'll need something to black out your rig. And it did a really good job of that as well. So there were three issues I wanted to resolve with regard to the curtains that I made. I wanted to um, resolve the issue of adhering them to the vehicle itself. Velcro is not ideal. It doesn't last very long in the heat. Um, I don't even know if, you know, cold, it does so well in the cold. So I wanted a better way to adhere it to the rig itself. I also didn't make mine quite long enough and maybe a smidge too narrow. So I wanted them to be just a little bit larger. And then the third issue was I wanted something easier to make so that more of you would tackle this project. And I think I've resolved all of those. My inspiration for the first issue actually came from Mark Steffen, who you saw in last week's video. When he showed me, uh, we had camped together out at Anza Borrego, and he showed me these OB bags where he stores his shoes and other things in his rig. I noticed the, uh, the little uh, hardware that they use to attach to a hard surface. It's called a YKK SNAD fastener, S-N-A-D and I will have links to everything uh, in the description box. Um, I went online and found that fastener, but I also found some other ones that they make, and I found them on the Sailrite website. I've used Sailrite before. I actually purchased a kind of a more industrial machine from Sailrite years ago, and I've purchased some of their other hardware and tools. I called Sailrite because I wanted to make sure I was getting the right fastener. Whoever makes these fasteners, well, I guess YKK, they make one, and these are held on their little um, fasteners, and um, I'll put a close-up of this. But they make one like this. It looks like it's red. It's really not. It's, uh, this is just a paper backing, and it has an adhesive on the back, and, and it's flexible. 
So I called, I called uh, Sailrite to find out if they thought that this would stay securely on plastic because every van is different. And our van, the, the windows on the side, the two windows on the side are, are encased in a plastic frame. A lot of vans, if you do it yourself, you're going to have um, metal around the outside. So you don't have to worry about this. But ours are plastic and it's kind of got a texture to it. So I wanted something uh, that would stick to that. But then as I started, and I ordered, uh, I ordered, I think, 10 of those. And then as I started thinking about the whole project, uh, we have the doors in the back have some metal exposed, so I could use magnets. And then the door, the sliding door, has metal exposed, so I could use magnets there. Um, so I thought, well, maybe I want a combination of things. And I then uh, went on and found some magnets that, had, that came with an adhesive back. And I thought, well, maybe that would be a good thing to use on the uh, lower section of the, um, of the frame of the window. So I've used a combination of things. And as, you know, as we travel and use these, I'll let you know how they work, whether they stay on, which one I think is better, uh, because I think you could go either way. You could either go with the snad or you could go with the magnets. And, um, and I'll take you out to the van and show you exactly where I used which kind of fastener. The other thing I discovered as I started Googling around magnets, I started thinking and wondering whether someone made a button that was a magnet. And so I actually did find some and let me show you those. So the, the only problem with the, um, with the button magnet is it's not as strong as the, the, the bar magnets or the round discs that I got. And, uh, but they have holes up at the top that you can actually sew on. And so that was uh, good for some of the areas where we wanted to um, use pre-existing metal that had been, um, the, the Pleasure Way comes, when we bought ours, it, you, they used Velcro to hold the MCD shades down. And we had them switch that out a while ago for the metal that they're now using so that the shade sticks magnetically to these little metal squares that they added. And so I've used the buttons opposite, uh, opposite those little um, squares that, uh, that our dealer put on for us. So that's another option. And some of you may have found other options that you can use. So, uh, but let me take you out to the van and I'll show you exactly what I've used where. There's the camera. This is where I used the snad fastener with the flexible base. And um, opposite that is the, the button or whatever they call this, this part. I attach that. And so that is up here in the, in the curtain balance, or the MCD shade balance, which we've removed. Oh, there we go. Down here, this is where uh, we had our dealer replace the Velcro tabs with these metal tabs. And this is where I've sewn on those little buttons. And so we've got one up here and one down there, and then those stick there nicely. And the middle, where I needs a little bit, uh, needed to be able to stick it to the plastic. This is the, these are the magnetic you know, dots that I got that have, they come with these little um, adhesive counterparts. And so I've used some primer, some uh, primer that comes from 3M and uh, use that on the plastic first, kind of following sale rights instructions and then, uh, and then put that on. These actually I did not get from sale right, but I use that same primer. Now in the curtain itself, I put a washer just a washer I had in the garage. And then I sewed a button through the middle of the washer so that the washer would not uh, migrate through this channel. And I've done three of those along here and three buttons like that. Here in the back, um, we actually have some exposed metal. And so I was able to do the same thing. Sew these buttons on right here so I could attach to that metal bit there. And then over on this side, 
we have one of those uh, metal plates that the dealer put on. So I put another button here. And then at the top, this is where I have the magnetic bars uh, that are sewn into the fabric. And they really are, they stick really well, as you can hear. Now, if I want to be able to roll these up, I'll need to add some uh, elastic that I like I've done on some of the other curtains. But I'm not, I'm kind of thinking I'm not going to do that on these back windows. I'm actually just going to remove them uh, when we, you know, when we're not using them. Because we do still have this MCD shade here that we can pull over and have use of both things. And here are the curtains when they're rolled up. And I can kind of stuff them into the valance to kind of hide them a little bit more. So the next challenge was the size. I had made the, my curtains just a little bit too short and I needed them just a little bit wider. Um, that's an easy thing to do. I just cut off a little bit more warm window fabric and sewed it to the bottom. I did not discard what I had because that stuff's pretty expensive. But I did go out and buy a couple extra yards of the fashion fabric that I used. And in a few cases, I uh, just redid that panel. And yes, I had to spend a couple of hours, maybe not two hours, maybe less than that, ripping out everything. So kind of deconstructing what I had done. But that was not a big deal. And uh, I actually like the look much better than I had when I had covered it, when I had edged the entire um, curtain with uh, two inch bias tape. I think it looks much better and it's so much easier to sew. So what I've done is I've made a, a small mock-up to show you exactly how I changed the design and, uh, and made it wider and longer. And I wish I could name the person who had commented way back, it was almost a year ago when I made these and suggested that I just sew the two pieces together and then turn them right side out because that was the start of, of figuring out how I was going to remake these in an easier way. Don't remember your name, but thank you for that tip. Um, I then kind of went a little step farther though, and I think I've made it even easier than doing that because if you just sew the two pieces together and turn them right side out, you still have to figure out a way to attach the magnets and any other, you know, any other hardware that you're going to use to attach to your actual vehicle. So, uh, so here is the uh, sample miniature that I made to help you and to show you how to do this really easily. So here I'm going to make a sample to show you how I made this easier. First of all, this is just a, a small, small piece. This is about 12 inches wide, so you want to make it about 3 inches wider than the finished piece. So I'm going to cut this fashion fabric here about to about 15 inches. And then top and bottom, give yourself plenty of fabric because what we're going to do is after I've sewn the two side seams, it's going to be folded down. This is not the right side, but it's going to, yeah, that's the right. It's going to be folded over, kind of like that. So I'm going to give myself um, about six inches on each side. Okay, now I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine with right sides together. So here's the right side of the fashion fabric and here is the right side of the warm window fabric and I'm going to sew it like this but I'm going to go all the way to the edge so I'll take this over to the sewing machine and stitch right along here. I'm going to use my serger because it will finish the raw edges. So you can see I've just sewn this side together and it's still with the right sides facing each other. Now I'm going to pull this one, the warm window fabric, over to the other side of the fashion fabric and sew this 
with both edges matching on the, along the side. So now both sides are sewn and I will flip it right side out. And as you can see, this now is kind of got a self um, edging here. And I will go ahead and uh, press that. So this is now pressed and um, obviously there's no insulated fabric under this edge, but that, that allowed me to make it slightly wider, which is what I needed. And also if I wanted to add, um, add a magnet along here, I had space to do that. And with the raw edges, I just folded them under once and then uh, pressed them. So that is that step. The next step is to fold this up and you can determine. So I wanted to make it a little bit longer. So you can determine um, how high you want to go or how low. But the deal with the magnets, these are the the bar magnets I use and they're really strong. Oops, they're really strong. So I decided how much I wanted them folded. And you can go all the way to the edge or you can add, leave a little bit of space the way I did and then press that down on both sides. So the problem with the magnets is that if you try to insert them and sew at the same time, so you'll you know stitch along and insert one and then stitch along, these are so strong they like to you know they find each other and uh, they will they'll quickly uh, you know join ranks. So what I found the easiest thing to do is to um, create the pockets first. So I'll come along and I'll stitch. These are about, I don't know how, how long. There are two, two and three quarter inches wide. So about every three and a half inches or so, I would uh, run stitching this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And on this piece, I mean, it's so small. I'm just gonna do one there and maybe one down here. So on a large panel, I used about five bar magnets across the top, one on each end, and then I spaced the others equally. And so what I did was I want to create some kind of a barrier so that the magnets don't find each other along this channel. So I just created, uh, I just did a back step, uh, back stitch down and then back. and then down to the other end. Then to give yourself a little less trouble with stitching this in here because this magnet sticks quite strongly to this plate, as you can see. Oops, I just found each other. So I then, stitched a channel part way down until I could um, then insert the magnet. Now it's really stuck in there. And this is where you're going to have to kind of you're going to hold it on one end down here and then in the front, pull it taut and you're going to have to help the machine pull the fabric through the feed dogs because the magnet is going to want to stay in one place. So you'll just have to fight it a little bit. So we'll come down. Once it's off the metal plate, then it'll, you'll have an easier time. So now I will go all the way down to where the next magnet is going to be inserted. And actually, because it is an end, and I could have done it on the other end, I'm going to stitch it. I'm going to stitch all the way down to the end. Oh, 
always find discover these things. The more we make, the more that we work on them. Um, now what I can do is insert the magnet here at the end, like this, and just stitch this bit, and then I won't have to struggle quite so much with the magnet. And then just stitch off this edge all the way down. And then to finish it all off, I'm gonna put one more row of stitching. So one more row of stitching all the way down here on this edge. Oops, I haven't finished that one off. And then the scissors wanna to stick to it too. This one off. And I'll cut a stitch. And then come down and stitch this last bit. You're gonna have to fight this a little bit too on this side. Because these are really strong magnets. Okay, and you're gonna stitch all the way down. I don't need to do that, so I'm gonna stop. And then you'd also do it on the opposite end if you're gonna place magnets down at the bottom. Okay, I hope that was helpful to somebody. <laughs> and uh, if not, you can tell me so. Um, and if you have any questions, of course, you can ask them and I will do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.